Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to a brand new Total Extreme Wrestling Wednesdays and uh, yeah, thank you for everybody for watching the first episode, hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, we are ready to go again. Week two, we've got some big matches planned, as you guys should be aware if you watched the first episode, Money in the Bank, we are ramping it up, so we're going to start with Monday Night Raw and then once again, dream matches already announced for Monday Night Raw, so let's do it. Okay, then Monday Night Raw opens up with a Raw Women's Champion, Becky Lynch, to what I would assume was a big pop. She's in the ring with the championship on her shoulder, and she says, listen, last week, Nia Jax sent me a message, and she's right. I, I never really got my revenge for what she did to my face. I'll take on any challenge. I'm the man. I can beat anybody you put in front of me, how big, how small. I can beat anybody you want, but it doesn't really matter because if Nia Jax wants the shot, she, she's got the shot. Nia Jax comes up on the Tron, we'll say the Tron, and says, good, glad you're seeing the, what, what, what I expected from you, uh, Becky, but money in the bank, your confidence is going to be your downfall because I am not like most girls. I will win the championship at Money in the Bank. Before she can get the last sentence out though, she's attacked by a steel chair and Liv Morgan is attacking Nia Jax with the chair backstage. Revenge for last week's attack after the match after Nia beat, beat Liv. Nia continued attacking. Becky had to make the save of course. So Liv getting some revenge with the steel chair. It hasn't done so well in terms of the game. 29 rated segment. Um, poor way to start the show apparently which is a bit annoying. I thought Becky is a good way to start the show but um, yeah, we're building towards the Women's Championship. We're using low, uh, a live as well to try and do that. So, yeah, that's fine. The next segment is for the Money in the Bank qualifier match. And Alistair Black qualifies for Money in the Bank. Defeated Angle Guards in about 17.59 with the end of line. I'm going to say one with the Black Mass. 48, so it hasn't done that well, but there may have been a reason. Alistair Black suffered a knee tendonitis. Not sure how long he's going to be out for, but I bet he's out the money in the bank match. Oh, great. Brilliant. Angle guards are 55. Alistair Black, 64. So as we say, that segment rating seems really low, but I'm assuming it's due to the injury. Disrupted due to the injury, really, and a disinterested crowd. So that would have been a 55 rated match, which I'd have been happy with. That's annoying. Annoying. But Alistair Black, in storyline, has qualified. So we'll see what happens from there. He then cut a backstage promo and didn't use a script, did really well. 72 rated promo from Alistair Black saying Money in the Bank will be the time that I take the fight, the fight of my career and take that next step to the superstardom that I am meant to be. 72, pretty good. Not so good here. Tag team action, 33. Okay, it's meant as a short little match so I can get away with it. Uh, the Street Profits defeat Shane Thorne and Riddick Moss in about five minutes. Montez Ford getting the victory. Street Profits pretty good, 56-57. Riddick Moss and Shane Thorne not as good is what it was. I'm not too upset about it. After the match, the Tag Team Champions cut a promo on um, Shelton and Murphy. Dawkins struggled when going off script, so that's interesting style. Montez Ford was very good. As you expect, gained heat for the storyline. 50 rated promo. Pretty pretty good, that. Um, the idea is to Street Profits are furious after last week when Shelton became a disciple, turned, uh, well, not turned heel, he was already a heel, but he became a disciple. And then, then, then uh, Buddy Murphy and Shelton Benjamin ended up joining the attack on the Street Profits later in the night. So we're building up towards Street Profits versus the Disciples for the Tag Team Championships. It's pretty good for 50. Speaking of the Disciples, the 68 rated match here, I, well, I feel like it's a little bit harsh, actually. Um, Seth Rollins defeats Cedric Alexander in 17 minutes with a pedigree. Good long match between two good workers. 68 rated match, as I say. Seth, 80. Brilliant. 55 from Cedric. Not bad at all, either. Um, and, yeah, I thought it was pretty good. What were we penalised for, really? I Cold crowd. The crowd are struggling a bit, but I think that's pretty good. Good stuff. Seth getting a win as well. That's the main thing. Afterwards, Seth Rollins is celebrating in the ring. He looks up, and when the crowd starts to roar, he spots Kevin Owens come sprinting down. Of course, Kevin Owens was attacked. Um, well, his WWE Championship opportunity was taken away from him by Seth Rollins last week. Uh, Owens comes sprinting down looking for revenge, but by the time Owens gets there, Rollins has already made his escape via the crowd, so Owens doesn't get to Rollins just yet. 67 for this, you kind of expect better, but it's pretty good, so yeah, it's not too bad. We says a video plays, I'm going to say the announcers are really hyping up this, the main event tonight, AJ Styles versus Rey Mysterio. 
and the winner will be in the Money in the Bank qualifier. And of course, the announcers will talk about the fact that Raymond Stewart was attacked last week by Bobby Lashley. Um, so will he be 100% fit? We saw he was taken out by the ambulance um, in a post-Raw video, which we showed on main event. So we're really building up this idea that is Ray ready to go? And will this dream match be hindered by the fact that Bobby Lashley has attacked Rey Mysterio. 70 though, good video, good video. The Kabuki Warriors are backstage uh, cutting in an interview, we'll say, with say Charlie Caruso and she, and they say, look, you two are usually partners, but you're about to go at it with the Money in the Bank, Women's uh, women's Money in the Bank Championship qualifying spot, uh, that's words, uh, on the line, how do you feel? And they say, look, we, we understand that uh, there's a big, there's a big, big prize on on the line. But we're friends. We're a tag team. We'll still be a tag team afterwards. May the best woman win. Fifty, pretty good. And the match itself, forty eight. So that's not as bad as I thought it'd be. Fifty nine from Oscar, fifty four for Kyrie Sane. I've realised last week this um, this game does not like face v face. Again, that's probably what brought it down. Forty eight. I mean, it's still not good. But it's going to take some weeks to build it up. Just focus on a booking for now and the numbers will build up, I'm thinking. So these two could have a really good back and forth baby face match, is what I'm thinking. Asuka gets a quick roll up um, to defeat Kairi Sane and qualify for Money in the Bank. So that's Natalia, that's Shayna Baszler and that's Asuka on the Raw side qualified for the Money in the Bank. So yeah, it is what it was, but 48, pretty good after the match. A handshake between the two, a, sh a sign of respect for 43. Pretty good. Randy Orton cut a promo, hyping up his match against Ricochet coming up for 65. So good stuff from Randy Orton. Improvised well. I'm, I mean, I'm trying to let them not be scripted, see if they can do it. Orton was good. Dawkins earlier, not as much. So we got to remember him. But good stuff from Randy Orton here. 65 promo. Um, tag team action here and... 49, so it's it's actually pretty good. Apollo and R-Truth really held themselves together. Shelton off his game again, which is annoying, but Murphy and Shelton get the victory, defeating R-Truth and Apollo Crews in five minutes. So uh, we're putting the heel tag team, new heel tag team, over a bit. After the match, though, they are attacked by the Street Profits. For 42, I kind of expected better again. That's annoying. That is annoying. Low locker room morale. Really? That's the thing that we're getting penalised for so much right now. Low locker room morale. We just started the save. Anyway, Street Profits running an attack, beating them down. The tag team champions stand tall for 42. Then we use the announcers to really start hyping up next week once again. So you'll see this one. After the attack earlier tonight, Liv Morgan will get a rematch against Nia Jax. Will Nia st stand tall just two weeks ahead of the pay-per-view? Or will Liv Morgan make a real statement in the women's division by beating the monster? We'll find out next week. Not just that, though. There will also be this one. Montez Ford will take on Murphy after the attack just now with the tag team champions. We have have an announcement Montez Ford taking on Murphy if Murphy wins the heels get the tag team title shot at money in the bank so hopefully that'll be a good one and finally Natalia will take on Shayna Baszler two money in the bank competitors just two weeks out from the, the ladder match will one get uh, some momentum over the other we'll find out next week so that's pretty good good match here 58 actually not a good match considering the the pr is it Mm, right, segment rating 58, Randy Orton 78, Ricochet 70, what have we been brought, it's low locker room morale, it's low locker room morale, lack of an associated storyline, I'm th I'm, I thought I put the money in the bank, I did, I mean that's a storyline, really, that seems harsh, anyway, Randy Orton qualifies for the money in the bank, so Alistair Black's there, Randy Orton joins him, or will, well, we'll see if Alistair Black is there, but Randy Orton joins him, the RKO defeats Ricochet in about 22 minutes, so pretty good stuff, Orton really good at 78, nor the segment ratings for now, I guess, I've got in my head, they will pick up as we go along in the save, and people get happier, I, I guess, I don't know, it's annoying, but Randy Orton, um, he's in the money in the bank, so pretty good. Afterwards, we come back backstage and Ricochet comes back through the curtain to find the US champion Andrade there laughing at the loss. Um, of course, that results in an argument and they start to brawl. Um, R-Truth and Titus O'Neil split it up was the idea, um, but it didn't really work as well as I thought it would do. Uh, I may have messed it up, but it's fine. The idea is we're now pushing Ricochet into the United States Championship picture. He was unfortunate. He didn't qualify for money in the bank. But Andrade has made himself a target 
with the laughing. So 47, pretty good. This is awful. Wow. Okay, so I haven't really named it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk through the idea between the whole segment and then we'll look at that because 39 is not good. The WWE Championship is struggling at the moment. Anyway, Drew McIntyre comes out and says, look, last week I put the title on the line. I've walked away with the title, but I, I don't feel good about it. Seth Rollins, you, you got yourself involved. You looked for a fight. Well, I'm here looking for a fight. So Seth Rollins, why don't you get out here and we can settle this like men. Kevin Owens interrupts though. Kevin Owens comes out and says, look, Drew, I get it. You're you're annoyed. I'm annoyed as well. I'm annoyed as well. It's my championship opportunity. I, I would have won the WWE Championship if it weren't for Seth Rollins. So maybe I should get him first. And Drew says, oh, no, <laughs> hang on a minute. You would have won the WWE Championship not quite, mate. I still I still had you exactly where I wanted you. I would have put you away. Don't you worry about that. Um, and the two start squabbling. Um, when Seth Rollins makes his um, entrance, he stands on the stage. He looks like he's about to say something. And then Shelton, Murphy and Acom attack Mer- uh, McIntyre and Owens from behind. Rollins never really gets involved in the physical confrontation just yet. McIntyre and Owens fight them off, but... Um, as as they do, so the heels leave the ring. Rollins is frustrated. Owens nails the stunner on the WWE champion because he weren't particularly pleased with his comments. So we're building up this triple threat tag team match and triple threat tag team match, the triple threat match for the WWE championship at Money in the Bank. And then it is announced that you can see the fancy graphic. Kevin Owens versus Drew McIntyre versus Seth Rollins at the championship on the line at the pay-per-view it should be good i'm hoping i'm hoping it'll be good okay then main event time and Rey mysterio makes it well aj makes his entrance first and then ray does make his entrance he's here and he he, he is medically cleared but he's clearly banged up he's got bandages and uh he, he's clearly clearly banged up ahead of the main event Rey mysterio aj styles 57 I mean, I am getting very annoyed, very frustrated at this. AJ Styles 78, Ray 62, and we get a 57. We get a 57, and I, I guarantee you it's low locker room morale, really. Declining physical ability for both? Are you joking? Like, I mean, okay. But anyway, AJ Styles is in the money in the bank match. So that's Alistair Black, maybe, Randy Orton, and AJ Styles joining Sheamus in the money in the bank men's ladder match. 57. For this one but that's not all as Rey Mysterio gets destroyed again by Bobby Lashley for 40 41 41 dead crowd I mean that's harsh I think I've given them really good Ugh. yeah if anyone's got any um advice on in the comment section has how to fix this low rock locker room morale nonsense please let me know because it is kind of messing with the shows right now which I've got to be honest and you guys can tell me if I'm wrong I don't feel like they're as bad as the segment rating saying they should be. So Rome Serio is celebrating the victory in well, it's not celebrating the victory in the ring, fair enough. Maybe that was a mistake on my part. Um the angles aren't great on this game. I suppose they'll be still working at it. Rome Serio um in the ring. Um well coming coming out of the ring when he's attacked by Bobby Lashley again. Uh, Lashley destroys him on on the stage, let's say. Right. This raw fifty five, it's it's getting really frustrating. I'm going to get flack for that as well. Annoying. Anyway, let's move on to NXT. Okay, then. Uh, yeah, Ca- camera's on. Camera's on. Good start. We, we're we not doing NXT either. It's main event. I forgot about it again. Anyway, let's crack on and start the show. We're going to do lots of promos tonight to try and improve things. Ricochet opens us up then with a promo on Andrade. He says, he wants to laugh at me. Well, we'll see who's laughing when I'm done with Andrade. 50 for this. Okay, not bad. Gain some heat for the storyline, so I can't complain too much. Ricochet was then in action against Jinder Mahal for 62. So good match here. 64 for Ricochet, 53 for Jinder. Pretty good stuff. Again, advanced the US title storyline. Um, so Ricochet gets a win and some momentum. Bobby Lashley could a promo on Rey Mysterio for 35. Bobby does not do well without a script. Good to know. Brilliant. MVP helped Lashley, though, so that's pretty good. Um, that's still a lot of struggling. Lashley then defeated Akira Tozawa for 39. Again, this just struggles. 53, 42, 39. Can you make sense of it? Because I can't. I cannot. Becky could have promo on Nia Jax for 56. That's pretty good. And she does well off script. So that's what you expected. 
Uh, Murphy and Shelton Benjamin defeat Apollo Crews and Titus O'Neil for 53. This was pretty good, about what you'd expect. expect. Solid stuff. Um, and again, a good win for the heels. Drew McIntyre could have promo on Seth Rollins for 48, so Drew didn't do well with the script either. That's without a script, so he needs scripting, so that's frustrating for you, WWE champion, but it's fine. 48. And then Kevin Owens defeated Austin Theory for 64. So this is a good main event as well. Um, Kevin Owens really holding it together at 68. He's, you'd expect his in-ring form to actually be better than that. But uh, no, that's not bad. Not bad at all. So the show itself, a 61. We've we've whizzed through it, but there's a reason for that. Bobby and Ray are struggling. Doesn't help that I've given them the main event for the last two weeks anyway. NXT. Okay then, NXT. We've got a pretty big show planned here. A big main event for the North American Championship. It's not announced. I know it's not announced, but that's what we do. Start the show would be a good idea, wouldn't it? We open up with a 44-rated segment. I kind of expected better. It says again, lack of interest in, lack of anything interesting happening. They're having a, a pull-apart brawl. What? Is, is something wrong? I don't know. I don't know if it's me. Please let me know, because I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, Finn Balor and Tommaso Ciampa... It starts as a promo, is the idea. You've got um, Bala saying, look, you, Tommaso Ciampa, I think you're the heart of NXT, the soul of NXT. I know it was originally Gargano, but he's a heel now, so Ciampa takes that role, is the idea. Um, but the thing is, you're a little bit broken, aren't you, Ciampa? Every time you've had your, your shot at the top of this brand, you've had an injury. Every single time you've been given the ball... You've let it go each and every time. Now, me, when I was given the ball, I had perhaps the most successful spell on top of NXT that anyone's ever had. I, NXT was probably at its best. It's what a lot of people say. You know, Tommaso Ciampa, you think you're the heart and soul of this brand, but actually, Finn Balor is NXT, and NXT will always be Finn Balor. Uh, they obviously start brawling, um, and then means we could get some of these wrestlers out there um, to try and split it up for 44. Kind of expect better, but it's fine. 56 for a good match here. Uh, Dominic Dijakovic defeats Cameron Grimes. A good win for Dominic. Words. Um, he defeats Dominic Dij He defeats Cameron Grimes quite easily. I'll get words out eventually. Uh, Dominic Dijakovic getting a good win is the main thing. Um, obviously, we're building up this feud between him and the incoming carrying cross. So Dominic Dijakovic getting the win makes absolute sense. Grimes wasn't particularly happy about losing, which is a little bit weird to me that Cameron Grimes has got a higher popularity than Dominic Dijakovic. I'm using the Killing the Business um, database and I have done a bit of research as we've gone along and that database in particular He's very AEW heavy, which I assume is why Cameron Grimes is quite heavily populated. Maybe with the idea that he would eventually go to AEW, I don't know. Um, but like AEW, for, I'll, I'll show you at some point, they're putting on 80, 90 rated shows. WWE's main roster doesn't have the popularity to even do that. It's very one-sided. I've started it now, so let's see how it goes. If it really does ruin it, eventually we'll start again if need be. But for now... We'll crack on. 56, though, for this is pretty good. Dominic Dijakovic, uh, 41. Again, look, the idea that, that that sort of performance is just wrong to me. It should be maybe the other way around, if anything, but we'll carry on. It's a good match. That's the main thing. Um, over, overhead belly-to-belly -belly suplex does it for Dominic Dijakovic. Afterwards, for 36, Scarlett Bordeaux comes out and says, Last week, I teased my client, this monster, coming to NXT. Well, next week, Dominic Dijakovic, you get to meet your maker. You get to meet the monster and it will be the end of everything that you know. And Scarlett Bordeaux just, just leaves it there. Dominic Dijakovic is determined as usual, but also a bit like, right, what the hell is going on here? 36, okay. Okay, so this one, Ryan Katz could have done better as a road agent. That's annoying. Um, good to know. Uh, Adam Cole, 67, which is pretty good. Cuts a promo, hoping up his upcoming title match with Velveteen Dream. Just cuts a promo and says, Velveteen Dream, you're a freak. You should not be at the top of NXT. This is the sort of story I'm going to go with that Cole doesn't doesn't appreciate who Velveteen Dream is. And yes, he's a bit kooky, he's a bit wild, he's a bit wacko, but he's unique. And um, we're going to sort of try to tell this bullying, I guess, is the best way to do it. Be a star, you know. Um, but Adam Cole doesn't doesn't think Velveteen Dream is cool. He thinks he's a bit of a loser. He thinks he's, he's a weirdo. Um, 
and uh, he should not be anywhere near the top of the card in NXT. Probably shouldn't even be in NXT in the first place. 67, though, it's a good, good promo. Um, and then next week, it's announced Velveteen Dream will be taking on one member of the Undisputed Era in Kyle O'Reilly. So next week, main event is set. Velveteen Dream, the number one contender against the champion's mate, Kyle O'Reilly. Should be a good match between those two. We have another comedy sketch between, for, well, for the bros away. So last week we saw Matt Riddle give Pete Dunne a key and they are now in an ap apartment together. So of course, they've had to get some furniture. And we do an old school classic sitcom scene you've seen it in things like friends and stuff like that of them trying to get a settee up the stairs or a, or a sofa wherever you whatever you call it um up the stairs to their apartment struggling and eventually making it through the idea of these two could really bounce off each other get a lot of comedy going that is the main thing and a 61 rate segment is pretty good these two are very clearly acting like a comedy tag team at the moment um in terms of their skits Usually I'd say that would take away from the tag team titles, but it's kind of the idea at the moment because then we move on to the Grizzled Young Veterans getting another good victory. 56 for this over Breezango, a good popularity. So this is a good, good win for them. James Drake, 39, gets improved again. Weak link, sure, but everything's improving. Um, and the Grizzled Young Veterans get a good, solid win in the tag team division and then cut a promo on the Bros Awaits for 33. Uh, so both men needed a script. That's interesting. That Gibson, I thought, would do well without a script, but good to know. Um, basically saying you guys aren't taking it seriously. We are tag team specialists, and we will take that tag team titles off you whenever you you, you have the balls to come back to into the into the ring instead of being these these comedy characters. I want to see tag team champions, and if you can't do it, we. Will, 33. Well, okay. Got a Kai, got a promo, hyping up her match with Tegan Knox. Well, not hyping up her match with the Tegan Knox. That's just where the promo says it'll be. Just got a promo on Tegan Knox, really. Um, and saying, listen, after last week, after we finally got the upper hand on you and dealt with you, we're done. We're done with you, Tegan Knox. We have no need for you. I'm, I'm looking up. Tegan Knox, you're in my past. And you'll just get injured again, so I ain't worried about you. See you later. Goodbye. 42 for this. is It's okay. Dakota then defeated Mia Yim for 47. So this is pretty good. Could have been better, I guess. Um, lack of heat from a storyline is fine. It's not a problem with a lot of that. Um, uh, it's it's a good good match. Good women's match for 14 minutes. Dakota Kai getting a victory over Mia Yim. Um, who's got more pop, but Dakota Kai is a heel on the rise in the roster. I think we can use her quite well. Um, and, of course, she's feuding with Tegan at the moment, so it makes sense. 47. After the match, though, Tegan runs down and gets her revenge, attacking Dakota Kai before Raquel Gonzalez can get to her. Then she escapes, is the idea. 42. So these two now are feuding back and forth, and it's pretty good. Pretty good. It's then announced that in two weeks' time, it's going to be Tegan Knox taking on Dakota Kai in a tables match. So these two rivals will finally get their hands on each other and they'll even have some weapons to use. It should be a good one. Two weeks time here on NXT. Keith Lee has a rebuttal for Johnny Gargano. Obviously last week Gargano says he wants to bring back the good times to NXT. He wants to get rid of these NXT fakers and Keith Lee is the number one target on his back. Well, Keith Lee says, I'm not a faker. I'm very real, Johnny. I think you are faking. Faking in the fact that, one, you think you're a star when, let's be honest, you're not. And two, you really think that you and your wife, your evil little witch of a wife, deserve to get all the best shots on NXT. I mean, your wife deserves a lot of things, Johnny. I mean, look at her. She deserves a lot of things. Not you, though. Let's be honest. You're but you're a bit punching there, aren't you, Johnny? Gets involved, gets the wife involved, really gets it personal between the two of them. 61. So Keith Lee, of course, is involved in the main event tonight, which I think might be next. Um, I can't remember exactly what was next. But if it is, it's Keith Lee versus Damian Priest for the North American Championship. And it was. And it's a 60-rated match, so a good main event. Better than both people's performances, so it was boosted. Really good stuff um, and a good win for the North American champion. They've got 22 minutes. They've got time to really have a good match. Damian Priest, after winning last week against Dominic Dijakovic, after Scarlett got involved, of course, um, earned 
a, a North American title shot. Um, I think these two pair well together. It's a feud that we could eventually go to down the line. Really good match. Really, really good match. Johnny Gargano was on commentary for this one um, and watched Keith Lee get a good win. Shawn Michaels was the road agent and did very well, so that's very good. And to end the show, though, Gargano attacks Keith Lee and leaves him down in the ring for 49. It says nothing interesting happening. I would find that pretty interesting. I don't know about you. I think it's broken, but we'll move on. 49. Good main event match, though. It's been a pretty decent NXT of 59. So we've increased our popularity in 33 regions. Really, really good. Um, I should mention, and apparently this happens quite a lot with the database, WWE have dropped to medium because that's likely, isn't it? Sure. I've started it, so I'll carry on. I'll build them back up. But it's just because um, medium to big, I think it is, or whatever it is, you have to have um, shows like 77 or something like that. No chance of it now at the moment. It it's fine we'll we'll carry on um but i i'm pretty happy with this nxt really good stuff and of course next week Veltin dream versus o'reilly and in two weeks dakota kai versus tegan Knox. so we've got some matches planned out for the next few weeks which is good okay then nxt uk back in its usual place of a thursday i realized what the issue was it's actually that on the wwe network now nxt uk is shown on a friday i tend to watch it a few days later um, but I'm going to put it on Thursday for now. I think it kind of works well. Raw Monday, main event Tuesday, NXT Wednesday, NXT UK Thursday, SmackDown Friday. It just kind of works well for the video. Um, so that's what I'm going to go with. I've changed it. So that's what we're going with. Here's the show then. This is going to be a struggle. <laughs> uh, well, I've looked at the, um, I've looked at the um, roster and some of the popularities are baffling. Baffling, I tell you now. The fact that somebody like um, Ilya Dragunov has zero popularity in the British Isles. Somebody messed this database up for NXT UK and WWE in general by the looks of it, but we've just got to battle through and hopefully we can come out the other end eventually looking good. We're in the Midlands today, so that's pretty good. 167 people, really big crowd, wonderful. Uh, 22 start with a video hyping up the opening match tonight, which is Mark Andrews versus Joe Coffey. And the idea behind this was show Joe Coffey's attack on A-Kid last week. We show that the brutality of it. And then we show Joe Coffey coming back through the curtain post-match, which wasn't shown last week, obviously. And we see Mark Andrews uh, confront him and say, what the hell is that? What the hell? Yeah, you beat him fine, but did you really need to go overboard like that? We are meant to be a brand and we're all meant to be in this together. But you, you're only out for yourself. And Joe Coffey just smirks. And then it leads into tonight's opening matchup between Mark Andrews and Joe Coffey. For 44, so that's actually pretty good considering the, the, the popularity levels. Joe Coffey and in ring forms of 37 is pretty good considering his pops like 12 or something stupid like that. So that's good. 47, good match. 44 to open the show. Joe Coffey defeating Mark Andrews with a discount lariat. Another good win for the heel. So he's defeated A Kid, destroyed him. Defeated Mark Andrews as well. He stuck up for A Kid. And after the match, he cuts a promo saying, A Kid better not. He didn't defeat A Kid. Ah, yes, because that's the main point of the story. Aikid defeats him, which is why he destroyed him. Ignore me. Um, Joe Coffey then cuts, cuts an interview saying, Aikid better not show his face around here again or he will be destroyed. 17, because Aikid's got no pop and Joe Coffey neither to see. But uh, it's fine. 28 for this one. The women's champion in action. Kaylee Ray, the women's champion, has the exact same pop as Zia Brookside. Zia Brookside. Whatever. We'll move on anyway. But uh, Kaylee Ray getting a good win here. 31 from her. 25 from Zaya. Pretty good. 28 overall. Can't complain after the match. Kaylee Ray gets on the mic and says, I've beaten everyone there is to beat. Tony Storm, beat her. Zia Brookside, beat her. Anybody else really want to step up to me? And of course she does. Piper Niven comes sprinting down. Uh, Kaylee Ray gets away. Um, but Piper Niven was looking for a fight. And she's looking for a fight with the NXT Women's NXT UK Women's Champion. 17 for the segment, fine. 30 for this one. Gallus backstage pro, uh, taunting Trent Seven and Dave Mastiff. The Black Country Boys, as they're now going to be known. I will change it. Um, the NXT Tag Team Champions, NXT UK Tag Team Champions. Um, get on the mic and really sort of cut them down. The uh, possible challengers, Trent Seven and Dave Mastiff. Continuing that storyline, fine, 30. Next week then, it's been announced Tyler Bate will be in action, one of the biggest stars on NXT UK, and he'll be taking on another big star on the brand, Noam Dar. Should be an absolute classic between these two. Tyler Bate, Noam Dar, next week. But of course, Tyler Bate has been feuding with Jordan Devlin, and next week, Devlin will also be on it. 
be in action when he he puts over the NXT Cruiserweight Open. An open challenge to anybody in the back to take him on for the NXT Cruiserweight Championship. Jordan Devlin and Tyler Bate both in action next week. Ahead of the main event then, Ilya Dragunov cut a promo on Volta saying, Volta, look, you have been a dominant champion, but I want my shot. You've never seen anything quite the like of me. You've terrorized this brand. I want to bring the good times back to NXT UK 22, considering the pop that not bad. The match itself, uh, Ilya Dragunov defeats Fabian Eitner for 31. Okay, so yeah, Jason Jordan as a road agent wasn't that great. We could probably change the stats a little bit, maybe, thanks we need road agents. I brought a load of road agents down, so it's cool. Um, Ilya Dragunov gets the win over Fabian Eitner. Fabian Eitner wasn't happy about it, but we've got to build Dragunov up. He's <sighs> ruined on this, but we've got to build him up, so it's fine. 18 from him, really. 31, okay. Um, but the NXT UK Championship storyline has advanced. After the match, um, Alexander Wolf comes down, Fabian Icon, they start destroying him, and then Volta's music hits. Volta comes down and destroys Ilya Dragunov for even mentioning his name. 14, that's harsh, really harsh. But Volta is here, the NXT UK Champion. So there's your show, 27. Use Ilya Dragunov and Joe Coffey too much. That's just stupid popularity that's why i do 20 i don't even think it's that bad of a show we've increased our popularity in 50 regions so take take the wins when you can just quickly before we get to smackdown i don't like ragging on people who create these databases but this is just incredibly wrong so i just had a look at piper niff and i was interested at a pop so it's at a 20 whatever we'll move on but she's considered a heel she's not a heel she's a baby face go to the nxt uk women's champion shall we uh where is she uh kaylee ray She's not a baby face. She's a heel. I'm so... Is there anybody else that's just wrong? A kid's a baby face. Alexander, yes. Yes. Yes, I believe. Yes. All this is correct. All this is correct. Yes. Uh, yes. No. Elia Dawn is not a baby face. She's a heel. I just... Am I am I wrong there? I don't remember her being a babyface at all. At all. Um, who else? Ginny, heel. So that's correct for once. Joe Coffey, heel, good. Um uh, where am I? J J Jordan Devlin, heel, yeah. Connors, heel. This is just this is just ridiculous. She's not Am I have I missed something? When did she turn babyface? I don't I don't remember her turning babyface at all. I just, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Well, if that's the case, we can't turn, cancel the turn. Piper's going to have to work as the heel. And Kaylee Ray's now the baby. I don't know. I don't, I can't. Tony Storm, baby face. Good. Well, that's good. Travis Banks, baby face. So we've got a lot of baby faces on this roster now and not as many heels. Which is just brilliant. Size of baby face and that's correct. Her pop's gone down. Pop's gone down from the loss. That's really harsh. Anyway, I just thought I'd show you because it's really, 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 really annoying. Okay, then, final show of the week, and it is, of course, Friday Night Smackdown on Fox. Don't forget on Fox. And we open up with the Intercontinental Champion, Sami Zayn. He's, he's replying to Daniel Bryan's comments from last week saying that he's a disgrace to the Intercontinental Championship. And Sami Zayn says, look, Daniel Bryan, you're a has-been. You're, a, you're, a, you're a, a wrestler of a previous generation. Whereas me, I mean, I defeated Braun Strowman. I am the Intercontinental Champion. Daniel Bryan, just go back to retirement. Honestly, you're just boring me. Bryan, of course, comes out. They have a bit of an argument. And um, Bryan goads Zane into putting the title on the line at Backlash. Sorry, not Backlash. The Wow, wow. Money in the bank. Sami Zayn will take on Daniel Bryan with the Intercontinental t title in the middle of it. 59 for this. Pretty good. Deserve better colour commentary, apparently. But still pretty good. It led to the opening match where Daniel Bryan was facing Cesaro in a short match. And it got a 70. Best match we've had so far. No surprise that it's Daniel Bryan. Brian, 79 performance from Daniel Bryan, Cesaro 64, 70 rated match, so what's that, three and a half stars? Okay, I, I can see it, short 10 minute match on SmackDown, three and a half stars, yeah, okay, 
Uh, Cesaro benefited from having a grand of public support. What's going on here? If this says face v face, I'm going to be frustrated. It doesn't. Okay. He just he just liked. So that's that's fine. That's not a problem. Um, and it adds some heat to the storyline. So that's pretty good. Gains heat. 70. Daniel Bryan beats Cesaro on his way to money in the bank. So good start to the show. This a really good start. Roman Reigns cut a promo ahead of his main event tonight, of course, when he takes on Shinsuke Nakamura for the Universal Championship opportunity. 68, so a good promo, but he struggled when going off script, so I am going to have to script Roman Reigns, which is frustrating. Uh, Otis also struggled going off script here. He was in the ring giving an interview, talking about Dolph Ziggler in the build of their match. It would have been next in theory. Dolph Ziggler came out and attacked Otis, destroyed him, laying him out. Kofi Kingston came out and made the save, and Otis agreed and said, Kofi, Take my place in the match right now. 63 for this, not bad. Leads to the Money in the Bank qualifying match. Then Kofi has found his way in after losing the tag team titles last week. It's now Kofi versus Dolph. Otis is out of the match. And in, in a 55 rated match, Kofi Kingston qualifies for Money in the Bank. I put it as a um, work the crowd match. It didn't actually that work that well. I brought it down, so that's my bad. 58, 5, 68, 64. It probably would have been a 60 to 63 rate match so that's on me but Kofi Kingston qualifies for money in the bank before the night started he wasn't in contention now he's in the match bizarre it also builds to Dolphin Otis which means they can go forward now towards money in the bank so good uh the boss and hug connection come out that's the women's champion Bailey and Sasha Banks talking trash about Carmella um, and of course, it leads to a two on one beatdown of the uh, supposed challenger for the women's champion. 40 for this, so not bad. Firefly Funhouse, the 62 this week, not as good, but still okay. Um, Bray Wyatt cuts the Firefly, well, just the Firefly Funhouse, and he's going on the same sort of things from last week. And he says, Look, tonight is a big, big night. It's a big night, but uh, I, I have my eyes set. My friend has his eyes set. And. Uh, it's all about one thing, and that's protecting the chosen one. The chosen one will be protected tonight. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to leave out to you where you think that's going. Because, uh, of course, in theory, Roman Reigns is considered the chosen one. Um put Braun Strowman uh, we'll see where we're going Braun Strowman cuts a promo then on Shinsuke Nakamura and Roman Reigns I did Nakamura but it's also both of them in theory um, ahead of the match tonight basically Braun Strowman says I don't care who I get I don't care whether it's Shinsuke Nakamura or whether it's Roman Reigns. I will keep this championship. 65. Pretty good. Next week then, it's announced Sasha Banks will take on Carmella just two weeks out from Money in the Bank. That's the uh, Money in the Bank competitor, Sasha Banks, against a potential challenger for Bailey's title, Carmella. Um, so that those two will go one on one next week on SmackDown. Sheamus, after qualifying for the Money in the Bank last week, defeated Shorty G with a bro kick in 11 minutes. Uh, 57 for this, pretty good, pretty good. Um, hot red hot crowd. He's not going to get excited by a match designed to Jenny Lifton. So the crowd are hot at the moment. We've had a good show in theory. The crowd are pretty hot right now, which is surprising but good. So Sheamus. Um, going on and getting more momentum ahead of the Money in the Bank match. He then cuts a promo on the Money in the Bank competitors. We've said Kofi Kingston, but Seamus saying um, uh, at the pay-per-view, history will repeat itself. In 2015, I won the Money in the Bank and I won the championship. In 2020, I will win the Money in the Bank and I will win the Universal Championship. Braun Strowman, there is a target on your back, son. 63. Pretty good. In the Money in the Bank qualifying match then, we finally have the final man. So Jeff Hardy qualifies for the Money in the Bank, defeating King, Cor King Corbin in about 16 minutes. The twist of hate. Sure, I guess he can't call it the twist of fate, I guess, because of Matt Hardy. And But this is a pretty good match. 63 from Jeff, 64 from Corbin, 62 altogether. And Jeff, a good legendary babyface in the match. So this, this is pretty, pretty good um, after the match. He cuts a 68 rated promo on Sheamus or the Money in the Bank qualifiers, Money in the Bank qualified people, I guess. And so that's Sheamus, Randy Orton, Kofi Kingston, uh, Jeff Hardy, uh, AJ Styles and 
Alistair Black. Uh, so that's six people involved in the Money in the Bank qualifier match. Chef says he's got to win it for 68. Pretty good. Next week, then, we will see Alexa Bliss take on Mandy Rose in a Money in the Bank qualifying matchup. Mandy Rose versus Alexa Bliss. Very similar characters. And they will go one on one next week. But that's not all. Mandy Rose has been feuding with Sonya Deville and she will get her shot next week when she takes on the other half of the women's tag team champions, Nikki Cross. So it's Alexa Bliss versus Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville versus Nikki Cross for the Money in the Bank qualifying matches next week. 40 for the actual segment, so that's fine. Main event time then, and this is really, really disappointed in the end. Shinsuke Nakamura defeats Roman Reigns. We'll get to the actual booking of it in a second, but um, I, I did say seal the show. Um, they It dragged at the end as it was too long. I mean, it only went 28 minutes. It's not really that long. Shinsuke 68, Roman 78, 52. It's disappointing, but it's fun. Um, Bray Wyatt, well, the fiend comes out during the match. Basically, um, Reigns and Nakamura are having an absolute barnstorm in theory, and the lights go out. You can see movement in the darkness and you can quite clearly see a Sister Abigail to the man in the ring who we knew was Shinsuke Nakamura at the time. A Sister Abigail to the man recuperating on the outside, which would be Roman Reigns. The lights come back up. Both men are down. Reigns on the outside. Shinsuke Nakamura in the middle. No fiend to be found. He's disappeared. And then the ref has to start counting. And Roman Reigns is out. Roman Reigns is counted out. Shinsuke Nakamura wins the match. Bray Wyatt and The Fiend have cost Roman Reigns the match, which means Shinsuke Nakamura is number one contender for the Universal Championship. And at Money in the Bank, we will see Shinsuke Nakamura versus Braun Strowman for the Universal Championship. Reigns has been screwed. Nakamura Strowman for the title so that's your main event and it's a 57 rated smackdown so it's lost us a lot of popularity i think that's probably down to the main event being so low if that's a 70 rated match that's a lot higher that's on me but i actually think in terms of booking it was quite a solid show all round quite solid nothing really low we've built um some good stories I'm not that disappointed. Things are picking up a little bit. Okay, before we go, I just wanted to have a look at the medical and confirm. Alistair Black's knee tendonitis means he is out of the Money in the Bank match. So we're going to have to scramble about um, and rebook for next week and go from there. But Alistair Black is out of the match. So AJ, Randy, Kofi, Jeff and Sheamus. Three heels. In theory, we need another baby face we can put in there um, for the booking next week. I, I'm not going to reveal too much of the booking, but let's have a look at who, in theory, we could put in there on the Raw side as baby faces. So if we went to Monday Night Raw, uh, went to baby faces, and let's say, uh, I mean, let's go three major stars. Nobody. So that's good. Brilliant. <laughs> star. Let's look at star, shall we? So Black was one of them. Black was a star, which is a shame. So he's out. And there is Edge there, but I, I kind of feel like Edge should be used sparingly. Yes, he's got really good popularity, but I just feel like he should be used very, very rarely. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Let me know in the comment section. Is that something you'd want to see? Maybe Edge in the Money in the Bank. Um, in terms of anybody else back there, I mean, there's not many. There isn't many you could fill the shows. I mean... He's not back yet, but that's an option, Samoa Joe. That right there is an option. Ricochet and Ray are both, in theory, matched up. Samoa Joe, maybe, might be the right call. I think I think he's probably the best of the lot. I mean, if you go down to recognisable, I mean, you got Apollo Crews who could go into the match. 54 isn't terrible. Cedric Alexander, 54. But we've been... Mm, it's going to be very... very Umberto Carrillo as well, by the way. Mm, yeah. It's going to be very, very interesting of what we do. We need to get Alistair out of the match and we need to get uh, somebody else into it. And, of course, carry on building towards Money in the Bank, which is in two 
week's time. For anybody who's wondering about NXT and NXT UK's event, by the way, let's uh, let's have a show you of that. So I've got booked in. Uh, the next pay per view will be um, the end of June on the Saturday. So so basically this month it's it's going to be Money in the Bank and that's it. Next month we're going to have um, NXT Takeover at the end um, and then uh, Backlash. So yeah, fine, and, and that's what we've got for the rest of the year. So for my, five takeovers makes sense to me. Um, and NXT UK at the moment I've just got in NXT Takeover Glasgow, which I'm going to put in later in the year. I might put a few more in, but we'll we'll get to that when we come to it. But that's the end of the episode, ladies and gentlemen. A lot we've gone through, a lot's happened. Things are slightly picking up. I I, I do think things will pick up. We have to try and get over the database's flaws, but things will pick up. So until next time, peace.